Hello and welcome to the Gilstrat channel. My name is JB and in today's video I'm going to be showing you some footage that I took uh, about a month or so ago of me uh, opening up the Kato Digitrax uh, DCC system that I purchased to transfer my layout into DCC or convert it into DCC. Um, and I've also been making video, or well, I have been making videos, but I've been recording footage off and on over the last uh, month of me uh, converting different trains into DCC. So hopefully over the next month or so I'll start getting some videos edited and uploaded uh, so you guys can see how some of these trains are converted over. So yeah, so please enjoy this video. This is basically an unboxing video. I'm gonna pretty much just open it up, show you what the system looks like, and uh, discuss a little bit about my plans to hook it up to the layout. Uh, then I have some footage that I took a little bit later showing uh, how I had it hooked up, as well as a uh, testing programming track that I built, uh, that so I can hook my um, basically I can program my trains from my computer. So please uh, take a look at this, and hopefully you'll find it interesting. Real quick before I show you the footage of the unboxing, I did want to quickly mention the availability of DCC equipment here in Japan. So as you can see in this 2018 Kato catalog. They do advertise their digital DCC system uh, along with their other power controllers. And also on this other page you can see they have a little bit of information about how to install decoders into trains as well as some information about their uh, drop-in decoders for their multi-unit trains. Hello, welcome to the Gilstrat channel. So today I wanted to do an unboxing or more of an unbagging, uh, but I decided I went ahead and bit the bullet and decided to go and get a DCC system so I can run my Japanese trains in DCC. Uh, so I went to the store, got a couple things. Uh, first, uh, went to Conan, which is a basically a hardware store slash home supply store. I got some tools that I'll need for installing decoders. Uh, we got some wire strippers, uh, some flux for a soldering iron that I did purchase earlier, but I didn't have any flux, and a voltmeter. So these will all be useful tools when it comes time to install the decoders, which uh, I'm going to have to install a decoder in every locomotive except for the one locomotive that I imported from the US. Um, so these are the tools for doing that. I also, like I said, have a soldering iron that I purchased and some other things like micro screwdrivers, uh, pliers. So I do have those tools already. And uh, I did buy a couple accessory pieces of track here so I can make a program track and convert my layout over. Uh, so you can see I purchased this stuff from Volks. Uh, which it says is that really awesome hobby shop here in Kyoto. Uh, so I got some end bumpers. I'm basically just going to make a piece of straight track and hook that up to the program track. So the bumpers are for that. Uh, power in for the program track. And then this is a splitter. So what this will do is uh, I will connect the wires that are currently connected to my three power packs which control the inside tracks, the yard, the roundhouse, the station, and then the power supply that controls the inside and the power supply that controls the outside main line. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm just going to connect them all into the splitter and then this will connect right into the DCC system. So that's that. And now the main point here is the DCC system. So this is, uh, Kakato's part number is 29119, and this is the equivalent to the DCS50, uh, and in the K there I believe is for Kato, because they do have a, you'll see it's a little bit different than the one sold in the United States, but this basically is the Digitrax uh, Zephyr system. Uh, so this is the older one. Uh, they also had, uh, don't quote me on this, but I believe it was the 29124. 
uh, which is the now the newer one for the extra set, which I believe is the DCS-51. They had both at the hobby shop. This one was a little less expensive, and my thinking is one I'm running end scale, so uh, the biggest differences between the D51 or the DCS50 and the DCS51 is that the 51 has a couple extra functions because they keep adding you know sound functions. Uh, it's slightly higher. It's rated at 3.5 amps, whereas this one is only rated at 2.5 amps. Um, and I think there was a couple other things for like programming. Uh, but since I'm running N scales, I'm not really worried about the amperage. I have one sound locomotive, which is a locomotive I imported from the United States. Everything else is going to be running just straight DCC, no sound. So I really didn't see the point. Um, this saved me some money. And at my home layout back in the States, I was using MRC's Prodigy Advance. So that's what that's going on a 10 year old system now and basically all the things I need to do on my home layout I could do with that and I was running HO Broadway Limited sound locomotives and I believe that system was also rated at 2.5 amps so I figured this was plenty so that's what I did so let's go ahead open it up alright so first thing uh, we do have the power connector here so I believe uh, this is to connect power to your track um, maybe for the program track I'll, I guess we'll find out and then these are your standard uh, power connectors uh, that usually run from the power pack so I believe I think these are so you can connect this to other power packs and uh, there's this jump feature which uh, was also available on the Digitrack system back in the states uh, where you can connect two other uh, power throttles and use those as controllers. So you basically can have three controllers, the one on the system and then two extras, which I do plan on using that feature um, so I can have a couple different throttles going. Uh, here is the nomenclature. So here's our manual. Um, all of this, of course, is in Japanese. And it looks like they just hole punched it, so you gotta put it in your own little binder. Um, so I'll probably have to do that. But yeah, this is, uh, as far as I know, I mean, if you look at the picture here, you can see it looks very similar to the, uh, the Zephyr Extra. Um, so as far as I know, I think I can just download the PDF uh, of the DCS50 off of Digitrack's website, and that'll give me the information in English. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have some fun trying to figure out how to read this uh, in Japanese because my, my Japanese skill is nowhere near the point where I can successfully read a technical manual. But uh, you could practice. So I'll put that aside. And let's pull out the actual system here. So here is the system itself. And you can see basically it looks very, very similar. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, well, it looks very similar to the Digitrax system sold in the States. Uh, but this throttle here and this control, or I'm sorry, not throttle, this is the direction switch. And then the throttle control here. Uh, these look, not only are they identical to what you have on Digitrax back in the States, but they're also the identical pieces that they use on the regular DC controllers for Kato. So and I've actually heard that this whole system was originally developed by Digitrax working with Kato. So they had a system that they could sell here in Japan. And then they converted that system over uh, to be used in the United States. Uh, that's what I've read. Uh, I, I don't have that verified, so don't take that as 100% fact. Maybe in the comments you can let me know. Uh, but from what I understand, that's that's actually how the Digitrack Zephyr system came out, or came to be. Um, and then you can see it looks very similar. We got, um, which in, let's see, uh, Loco Net, so Loco Net. Um, so it does have the connectors for the Loco Net. Obviously, here's your power in. And then, yeah, so here's your out. 
for the jump. So this is so you can connect it to another throttle. Oh, maybe it only connects to one. I thought it could connect to two. Okay, well, this might only connect to one other throttle, but that still lets me control two trains at one time, which is pretty much what I'm going to be able to do on this layout anyway. And then we have, uh, let's see, Programo. So here's the program connector, so this will go to the program track. And then we have the Roid, so this is the main uh, DCC out. So just a little bit different from the one in the states, where the other, the one in the states has like little like screw connectors where you can put stripped wires in. Uh, this is designed to be plug and play. In fact, everything here in Japan for trains really does seem to be plug and play. They, I think it's because a lot of this stuff is not um, set up permanently like it is in the states. People, you know, you set something up for the weekend and you take it down. I think that's part of the reason why everything is designed so you don't have to do any soldering or stripping of wires or anything like that, um, which is, is pretty neat because I, I haven't, I, you know, I did buy a soldering iron as I said earlier, um, thinking I'd have to use it. I have yet to actually have to do any of that for any of the wiring on this layout. All the wiring has just been plug and connect, um, which is nice. So yeah, so that's how that is set up. So we'll get that going. And then on the bottom here, I believe, is just the power supply. Let's see. It, yeah, we got this on this unlabeled box here. It seems kind of big just to be the power supply, but we'll see. Um, padding in here. Yeah, it's just the power supply. And uh, it looks like it is... It is a universal power supply, which is nice, so that means I can use it in the States. So I can take this back with me to the States and use it. And yeah, this looks like it's very, very similar to the power supply that's provided with the Zephyr. And then it looks like this is just a ton of padding. Uh, so you're not getting um, a loco net tester cable, which you normally get with the system back in the States. But yeah, otherwise, this is uh, the same thing. And in fact, as you saw earlier, it actually has Digitrax right in here. So this was a partnership between Kato and Digitrax. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to hook this up and get it running on the layout. Alright, so I've gone ahead and installed the Kato Digitrax uh, starter set system. And uh, basically, I just pulled out the three analog controllers that I already had. Uh, connected those wires to the splitter that I showed you earlier and then I ran that one cable from the splitter into the DCC system and then I did keep one of the analog controllers and ran a jump wire from it to the DCC system. So I'll go ahead and uh, we'll test it out. So right now there's no locomotives programmed into the system so we'll go ahead, actually I'm going to use the jump feature so I can show you that. So you click jump, see that little light came on there, that's the jump indicator. Hit loco, now I type in the locomotive number that I want. So I'm going to start up my Shinkansen, the original Zero series. So since there's no numbers on the model itself, I decide to number it the year it came out. So 1964, hit loco again. And then I actually control it from here, so we'll put that in the forward position. And let's raise the camera up so you can see it on the layout. There it is. And there's a better picture. And I'll just go ahead and turn the throttle on the analog control. And the locomotive starts pulling out. And so let's pretty much uh, plain old DCC, pretty straightforward. Uh, all of the switches are still set up to operate off of these switch machines. Uh, that I kept the same, I just ran a jumper wire off of the analog controller to power that. And uh, so yeah, so that pretty much is all set. It's converted to DCC and this system works pretty much as well as the uh, Digitrack Zephyr. I mean, essentially is the Digitrack right, Zephyr. So in addition to buying the control system, 
I also uh, went ahead and purchased the new PR4 from Digitrax so I can program my trains using my computer. So I made this little programming board and uh, how it works is I have this double throw knife switch and I can switch back and forth between the programmer or I can flip it up and that connects it to this cable which runs over here, down the cabinet, across the floor, and over to the DCC system. Uh, yeah, that's very rigged, but uh, this kind of was as far as space to where I could set things. This was really the best spot to put this, so it can be right next to my computer desk, and I can run the software to go ahead and program the train. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, say I want to program this locomotive, I just flip it there, and we'll just go ahead and, uh, I'll just have it read the changes. Alright, so it read the decoder, and then I can just simply flip the switch, and right now there's no power to it. Uh, you can actually see here, um, the bumper has a light. So once I turn the power on, I actually have the track power off on the system. Alright, the light comes on. And then now I can just uh, test the locomotive. So I don't have to pick it up and move it. I can just uh, program and test right there on the fly. Yep, so then I can run it. And I can test it. And uh, this is this makes it really easy to program my trains, uh, especially since um, for the multi-unit ones I have to program them all to the same address and then play around with some of the uh, settings. This makes it a lot easier, and then I can also save everything. So if a decoder gets corrupted. Um, I have everything saved and I can just simply reprogram it if I need to. Well thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. And uh, like I said at the beginning, I hope into the future to uh, go ahead and make some more videos showing how I converted some of these trains to DCC. So if you are at all interested in converting uh, Japanese trains to DCC, hopefully those videos will be helpful for you. Um, so I'm hoping in the next month or so to get those up. And uh, in the meantime, you can go ahead and subscribe to this channel. And you can also check out my website at gilshret.info. Um, I'm also on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash gilshret. And you can also check me out on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash gilshret channel. So thanks again for watching.